what's going on guys and welcome back to another video now in this video we are going to be talking about Airtable and this video is going to be divided in a couple of parts in the first part I want to actually show you how Airtable works I want to walk you through the main interface I want to talk about the functionality I want to tell you what I think about it some use cases some ideas that you can put Airtable into your arsenal of no code tools and so that way you can, you know, figure out why you should use it, some, some advantages, disadvantages, et cetera, et cetera. In the second part of the video, we are going to be talking about integration. I'm going to be showing you how you can basically integrate the data in your Airtable databases, workspaces, into, you, <clears throat> into another app like Bubble or maybe another app that you like to be using. Okay, so let's begin. So before I show you what Airtable is. Let me show you a couple of apps that people are building and they're actually making money with it, right? So here's the first app and this is called Integrate, a searchable database of every app you can integrate without code. You can basically uh, take a look at it. There's uh, over 21,000 integration functions and you can actually buy this um, tool, this app right away for $39. And this is actually pretty cool because it's not an app that somebody coded. It's basically an app that somebody went out on Airtable and built it. And this is a, a really cool cool idea because you can you can buy this app and you can sort it, you can filter it. There's a lot of you know data manipulation that you can do. And you don't actually need to go out and, and scrape this data. You you buy it and you have this data at your disposal. The second example I want to show you is something called Stacks. This is a stock market strategy database. Stacks is a live database of 600 plus stock symbols with market data and technicals to help you plan your stock market moves. Okay, and so it basically gives you stock prices, moving averages, relative strength. Uh, you can search, sort, and filter. You can get automatic updates, expand and customize. So there's a lot of things that you can do. And this is also an Airtable app. It costs $29 and you can basically buy it and start using it. And this is also great because you're actually getting a, an app that's updating from time to time. And you can also use this data. You can, it has an RSA, RSI, temp, action. There's a lot of things that you can do. And so this is going to save you a lot of time because you don't need to go out and find this data on your own and actually build an app and, and do a lot of things and set it up how you want it to be set up because you can actually go out and build an app and, and buy an app that's already been done for you, okay? Another idea I want to show you is Pexels app, right? Pexels is a, a source for royalty-free images and Pexels actually build an app that you can basically integrate into your Airtable data, right? So this is a little bit different than the previous two examples because this is not an app, this is not a standalone app, this is actually an app that's integrated into Airtable itself. It's actually a field into Airtable, which is something I'm going to be showing you exactly how Airtable works. And so now that you understand that Airtable is, is a very special product, it's a very powerful product, I'm going to be showing you how it works. And then later on, we're going to talk about integration. All right. So here I am in my main Airtable screen. And what do we have? We have bases. And what is a base? Base is really a database. And what I have is three databases, okay? I have my event planning database. I have a project tracker database. I have a content calendar database. And these are all separate databases, okay? They are separate data. They have separate purposes. They're not, I mean, they could be related to each other hypothetically, just like databases are. But for the purpose of kind of uh, Airtable, these are very separate. And I can add a new base or a new database. I can also go into templates and I can, you know, find a template uh, that's going to be useful for my uses. And so here we are, we have a lot of templates, content calendar, digital video production project uh, tracker. And I can basically click on a template and I can start using it, right? It's going to give me, so for instance, this template has three uh, three spreadsheets in there, content pi three sheets, content pipeline, campaigns, and teams, and I can start using it. So depending on what I want to use Airtable for, it makes sense to start with a template, which is kind of what I've done here. And once I'm familiar, once you're familiar with what Airtable does, you can go out and you can build your own product. And there's a lot of categories here. 
everyday life, restaurant field guide, legal, local business, content production. There's a lot of interesting things that you can do. And you can, and I highly advise that you basically go out and you can start with a template. Okay, this is exactly what I've done. And this is kind of what I have. So if I go back to basis uh, and we start, so we have event planning, project tracker and content calendar. Now we can click on this and we can basically rename it. We can duplicate it. We can move it to another workspace. We can have multiple workspaces. As you can see, I have multiple workspaces here. And once I click on it, I'm going to have this screen open. I'm going to be greeted with this screen. And this screen is going to be very familiar to people that have used uh, Google Sheets, Microsoft Excel before, okay? Because all we have is basically one big spreadsheet with lots of sheets. So I have, what, seven sheets here, and I can basically click on them, and I can, you know, see the data in there. Now, what sets Airtable apart from, you know, simple spreadsheets like Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel is that you can describe fields what the day by the data type it has so for instance we have an activity and if you hover over this uh little a here which is basically a type of field you're gonna have a tooltip that's gonna tell you the description so for instance this is a single line text this is a single select this is a date this is also a date this is long text and this is actually a link to another record which is also very very simple and trivial to do with Airtable, which is something that's kind of complicated and a little bit messy, I can say, to do with Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. And it's very, very easy to do with Airtable. Uh, if you look at the left-hand side, you have different views, okay? And what is a view? This is our first view. We can click on the calendar and we're gonna have a calendar view. And the reason this is a calendar view is that uh, some of these fields or you know, all of these fields, they actually have a date associated with them. So what a calendar do does is it basically creates one big calendar. We have this uh, monthly calendar. We can look at uh, two weeks, uh, week uh, week view, month view, and then it basically displays the records uh, in that specific cell inside the calendar. So we have these records here. We also have a Friday schedule. Uh, we have a Saturday schedule. Lots of interesting things that we can do. Now, these views are very easy to set up because all of you is, is that is, is basically a bunch of filters. It's sorted the various uh, by by various fields and has you know various colors that you can basically uh, assign to different fields. So this view, the Saturday schedule we're looking at right now, it has a filter where the start date is this date, and if we look at the Friday view, we click on this view, you can see that it has a filter of start date happens to be a Friday. So that's all it is. You you basically customize. You can customize your main view. And you can create a new view from that uh, based on this the view that you customize it. Basically, it's a shortcut to your customizations, right? Your filters, you can hide the field. It has one hidden field. This notes is hidden. We can basically unhide it. And now there's no hidden fields. Or we can hide two fields. And now there are two hidden fields. So it makes things easy. You can hide fields in Google Sheets as well. But it just makes things very easy. It displays it. Uh, it's very uh, user-friendly. I can say now you can create new views here. You can create a new grid, a form, a calendar, a gallery, or a Kanban view, which is essentially kind of like Trello. If you're familiar with Trello, where you have various columns and the, the goal of the whole thing is to move uh, each record from left to right, from one column to the next, when you're basically completing tasks. This is what a Kanban view is. It doesn't make sense to create a Kanban view for this specific uh, data set, for this specific uh, sheet here, because this is not a type of view where we are moving from you know, one record to another. But for instance, if we go back to our Airtable and we go and we open Content Calendar, we can actually create a Kanban view because we have, we have statuses, right? As you can see, we have these records and they're basically... Uh, they have another uh, category, another field of status, right? And this is status is actually, we have different fields. So for instance, if I click on this and I customize field type, I have statuses, right? And I can add a new status. And we have planning, production, editing, staging, live. And this actually makes sense for a Kanban view because this status is going to be changing, right? Right now, this 11 summer inspired beach looks under 100. It's an editing phase, but I can basically modify it. I can click on this, I can click on this, 
and I can put it into production. And now instead of modifying it in kind of this, you know, this traditional spreadsheet view, I can I can create a Kanban view and I can basically modify it by dragging it from left to right. So for instance, if I click on Kanban view, I can basically choose the status as the grouping field. Okay, and I can click on done. And now I can basically drag from planning to production. I can basically close this, for instance, and I see all of these things, right? I see uh, basically our, you know, our traditional Trello view, okay? And I can basically drag it here. I can drag it here. And as I'm dragging it, the status is changing. So instead of basically going and modifying it here, which is not very intuitive, and you know, this also works. I'm sure people uh, did this as well at some point. It's a lot easier to basically modifying it in that traditional Trello type view, which is where this Kanban view is here. Makes things a lot, a lot easier. Now, one, one thing I really like about Airtable is the fact that you can pull data from other sheets. And you can see that by this by this field here this is linked to another record if we click on this and we customize it it says link to team and team is actually another uh, sheet here right it's another tab here and we can basically link to team and so if i you know if i have multi i have a team member here if i click on this and i can add plus so right now this is configured to only have one creator right i can also click on here and I can customize a field type and I can allow linking to multiple records. Once I do that, if I click on this, I see that plus sign now and I can, I can basically pick another person. Now, it doesn't make sense in this example because there can only be one creator, but if I have creators now, then I can have multiple people and I can click on this field and I can delete it. I can add new one. I can basically click on this. And I can expand it and I can actually see the record that was pulled from this team sheet here, right? I can go to this team and this is basically, I can click on this and I can see the team members. Uh, I can also see it in a nice uh, kind of team directory, which is a gallery here. Uh, I can also view it by traditional setup, team members, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of interesting things that you can do. And once you're viewing it, let's say we're viewing it by gallery. Obviously, this is something that's not very easily uh, done in Google Sheets. I don't think it's even possible to do it at all, you need, you need to probably code it a little bit. And that's, this is kind of what I, why Airtable is a great no-code tool because you can basically go out and you can create these, um, these records here in, in a very uh, user-friendly, very intuitive view, right? So instead of viewing it kind of like this, you know, kind of like a spreadsheet, we can actually view it uh, as cards, as galleries and really cool. And you can, you can have a calendar form, uh, lots of interesting things. And, and of course, you can modify it, right? You, you're not just viewing it. If I click on something here, it, you know, it gets a new uh, dialog box and I can basically go out. I can assign Quintana to Miami. And now if you look at Quintana, she's in Miami. And obviously, this is a different color because this field, this location field is actually specified to be yellow. Los Angeles is, is blue and San Diego is green. So there's a lot of interesting things that you can do. Now I can keep talking about it. There's a lot of functionality to cover, URLs, there's a lot of cool fields. But right now, I want to take a moment and show you how you can actually get data from this, from the data that you created, from your fields. And for that, we're going to go back to Airtable. We're going to open our event planning view, and I'm going to show you how you can actually pull data. Now, the first thing that you need to do is you need to Google for Airtable API, and you're going to be directed to go to this page, right? And this is my Air, Airtable API for that base, right? I'm looking at the event planning base here. And if I click on this, I can basically look at different uh, ways to use that API depending on the, the databases, depending on the different tables. So let's say I wanna use event planning and I can basically read about it. I can go to rate limits, authentication. Now for authentication, we can use a query parameter or we can use a bearer token. Now in this example, we're gonna be using a bearer token, which is something that I recommend which is very, very easy to do. And we are gonna be getting data from the schedule table. Okay, so if you click on schedule and you go to fields and you go to list records, you're gonna have an example request. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to postman.co.co, which is a great tool for basically testing APIs. You can create your own API and you can basically test APIs. And I basically want here, and I click on this button here, and I created a new API request. This is a GET request. 
And so what I essentially did is I went to this API and I copied this whole get request here. I went here, I pasted it here, and I also went to authorization and I chose bearer token here and I also pasted my bearer token. Now, once we have it all set up, I can click on send. It's gonna execute the request and we are getting the data back. Now, let's take a look at this data that we got back, right? And so this data is basically in the form of JSON and what we have is a dictionary of uh, various key value pairs. In this case, it's only one. It's records, which is an array of different dictionaries of key value pairs of different objects uh, that you can also call it. And we have various key value pairs. We have an ID, we have fields, and we have created time. And so fields is what you wanna be looking for. This, is the, this actually has the data that you want. So we have start, location, activity, and type, and speaker. And we actually executed max records. We want three, we can remove this. And now this is not gonna have you know the maximum uh, records that we want. So it's gonna go by the default, or maybe we're gonna get unlimited records depending on how Airtable is set up uh, on the backend. And so we have max records of three. And now we basically got the first three records that we basically are getting into that specific view. We also specify the view here. And so if we go back to our event planning uh, database and we click on this full schedule view, which is exactly what we specified, all, all we did is we essentially got these three records here. And so if you look at the activity, we have welcome breakfast, opening remarks and morning keynote. And we look at our response, we have wel welcome breakfast, uh, opening remarks and morning keynote. And this is exactly what we did. And now the beautiful thing about this is that now that we have the API, we can integrate it with pretty much anything else. We can integrate it with Zapier. We can integrate it with Google Sheets. We can integrate it with Bubble. We can integrate it with any app that supports uh, REST API. And so I already showed a couple of videos where I talked about Bubble integrating with Google Sheets using the REST API. And so in one of the future videos, I'm gonna be showing you how you can basically integrate Bubble with Airtable using the REST API. And that way you can build the whole front end in Bubble how you wanted to build using the, the nice uh, user interface, drag and drop and everything. And then we're gonna be making calls to the Airtable API and getting the data and basically showing it inside our Bubble UI. All right, guys, so this is all that I wanted to cover in this introductory Airtable video. If you wanna see more Airtable videos, more tutorials, more advanced uh, tips and tricks, uh, some ideas, things that you can use Airtable for, smash a like on this video, leave a comment below. Let me know that you wanna see more videos or that you've gotten value uh, on this video. I really appreciate all the comments and all the support and all the likes. And if you are not yet subscribed to this channel, definitely click the subscribe button because on this channel, we talk about no-code tools, basically ways that you can build apps without writing a line of code. So I really appreciate you watching this video and I will see you in the next one.